I had no idea I was going to be, um, what I was going to do or why I was going to art school, but it was something I liked to do, I enjoyed doing. And but I was introduced to art school where everybody, would, these were people 20, 22, or 25 years old. Many of them graduated from college. <laughs> so here I was, you know, and I was about half their height. For one thing, and I looked at these guys and I thought, I, I can't compete with these birds. <laughs> you know, I, by that time I decided I wanted to be an artist, but I didn't know how I'd ever make any money at it. And uh, so at the end of the first week, I went home and, God, I was, I was so dissolute. You know, I, didn't, I couldn't go... I couldn't do anything in high school. I couldn't do. I was a, I was a failure at 15, and uh, at least I felt that was a very profound failure. Uh, not really profound enough. I was the kind that slid in the middle of failure. You know, some of it's picturesque, some of it's just dull. I was one of the dull groups. So I, uh, my uncle, this great uncle that were that lived with us, and uh, occasionally uh, came up and he said. You looked, you looked awful. He said, you, what's the matter? He said, you look like something the dog had under the front porch. And I said, you know, that's what I felt like. And he said, well, what, what's the matter? And I said, well, you know, I always compete with these guys at the school. They draw like Leonardo da Vinci. And he said, you know, they're 20 years old. I'll never catch up with them. And he said, uh, you know, I, I guess not. He said, how about the, how about the teachers and so on? He said, oh, I said, they're wonderful. Uh, they're wonderful. One, one of them, of course, got up in front of the first class in life drawing, and he said, every one of you birds has 100,000 bad drawings in you. The sooner you get rid of them, the better it'll be for everybody. And not, not for us, for everybody, for the world, you know. Well, that stuck with me. But anyway, that came a little later. But and then I said, and I was just, you know, I, I just felt I, it was the end of the world for me. I could draw a little bit, but I couldn't keep up with the big guys. So I suddenly blurted out, and I said, you, 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 you know, got my lower lip out as you do at that age. And says, you, you, you can't make a, a racehorse out of a pig. And my uncle looked at me very gently and he patted me on the knee and he said, no, but you can make a very fast pig. And, and you know, I realized that was really what it was all about. I could only be good as, as good as I could be. I mean, whatever my limits were, those things, would, would, it wasn't that I had to compete with these birds. And I learned the second thing that, that creative work is never competitive, no matter how much you may think, think so. Uh, in, in the world today of animation in this particular year, there are a bunch of people making features. They're trying to make better features than each other, but that isn't the point. The point is you're trying to make the best picture, not the best picture that was ever made or the best picture that somebody else has made. There's no competition possible. When we were making cartoons at Warner Brothers, uh, we didn't know what MGM was doing or Warner Brothers was doing. It takes a year to, to make a cartoon. And so we'd, we'd had to make them and, and uh, not hope they were better than somebody else, but hope they'd be marketable. And more about that later. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's, uh, <clears throat> so I went through art school and as it turned out, that was the best possible schooling I could have had. And today is the best possible schooling that anybody could have to go into animation.